Welcome to Reread, where I'm doing these mic lists for the next couple of days, because, eh, why not? Uh, so, what is the next one I'm going to talk about? Well, it is the Revenge of the Sith novel. Now, everyone loves this novel. Some people say it's their favorite EU book. I'm thinking, now that seems strange, because why would they pick the novelization of a movie, which was good, I remembered, as their favorite EU novel? Well, I think I now know. Uh, this one's brilliant. It's 30 pages in before even the first scene from the movie starts, and what Matthew Stover does is incredible. He basically takes the movie and rewrites it. That's right, he doesn't quote the movie word for word. A lot of times when he sees the dialogue is really bad, he changes it, or he gives you a different perspective. So, for instance, you know, instead of hearing Darth Vader at the end go, we're actually hearing what thoughts are going on inside Anakin's head. Much better than just screaming out no. Alright? Uh, but there's so many good things here. So many um, extra scenes that weren't in the movie. This really sets the bar from all the other novelizations. There, and I've always known this. There's not been another novelization, uh, movie novelization, better than Revenge of the Sith. But, again, this feels like it's its own separate adventure. It doesn't even feel like it's just a, a movie novelization, if that makes sense. The whole time I kept reading it, it was like, man, I wish they'd make a movie about this. <laughs> it was that good. What am I talking about? Well, Dooku argues with Sidious that Kenobi would be a better apprentice than Anakin, you know, or something like there's a lot more dialogue between Dooku and the Jedi as they fight, but before they fight at the beginning. That whole Dooku battle and everything, that whole scene goes over like 150 pages in the book before we even get to the next scene. Really incredible, because there's, as they're escaping from the ship, uh, Palpatine is trying to convince Anakin the whole time to, hey, put Obi-Wan down. You go here and I'll stay here with Obi-Wan. Like, he wants to kill Obi-Wan. He wants Obi-Wan dead. But Anakin refuses to let him go. Um, and then, of course, more dialogue with Obi-Wan and Anakin as they're deciding what to do, how to get off the ship, and kind of making jokes. And Palpatine's like, can we please get with a plan here? It actually is pretty funny. Uh, it mentions Lieutenant Commander Nita, who will soon become Admiral, and well, I say soon, in 20 more years. Um, there's more stuff about the Jedi conspiracy to take over uh, T Chancellor Palpatine's role. In a way, Mace talks with Obi-Wan saying, hey, look, uh, relationships with this guy, the, uh, Palpatine, have kind of been strained, and here's why. He feels Obi-Wan in. He's like, look, we tracked down the Sith to 500 Republica. Where, and they don't think the Sith is Palpatine, but they think he's being controlled by the Sith. And they say, so we got to be very careful. Uh, Yoda meets uh, with Obi-Wan, oh, and Mace, and they discuss, you know, how the Sith have been orchestrating this war the whole time. And, you know, Dooku wasn't the one they needed to eliminate. The whole purpose of this war was to thin out the Jedi and eventually turn on them. And they, they know that. They just know what the total end game is, but they know it's... It's coming to a head here. Um, there's longer conversations with Palpatine and Anakin. Explains why he's putting them in the uh, temp, uh, the on the council and the temple. Explains. I mean, there's a great scene right before they go. They come to arrest him when he reveals he's a Sith. Matthew Stover rewrote all of that. It's not just I'm a Sith. Mm, you must do what you must. No, before that, there's this big long dialogue about what he can do. And Anakin, I'm gonna tell you, I'm a Sith, but have I done anything bad? Have I done, name something I've done bad. You know I've been working for peace. How is that bad? Tell me. And like he offers him anything he wants, like, like, a, like the tempter, you know, he is. Ask for anything. You know, he's like, Karelia? He went, the planet or the system? You know, Anakin, I'll give you anything. You know, it's like, I'm your friend to the end. I mean, it's just so great. So great. Um, it talks about how, you know, uh, when the Jedi go to arrest him, uh, there's this recording, an official recording, which we don't get to see in the movie because, again, it was totally rewritten. Uh, uh, Palpatine is acting like the Jedi are attacking him. Help, help, treason, treason. But the whole time he has his lightsaber and he's smiling as he's saying it, and then he slashes the recorder and goes, that's enough for now, and then attacks them and uh, kills them, uh, kills a bunch of the Jedi. And the, Je the, the other Jedi masters with Mace don't die in like two seconds. They do die quickly, but there's a little bit more explanation of what's going on. Uh, uh, man, Anakin and I mean, Padme have extra scenes about how they love one another, 
how Padme, oh, oh, how Padme is with Mon Mothma and Bell Organa. They signed the petition of 2000. Anakin thinks that's traitorous behavior. Palpatine's trying to tell him that, but say, hey, look, you team up with me and Palp uh, Padme will be safe. We're, we're going to persecute these other traitors, though. And when they, when he says, when he tells uh, Palpatine that the war is over, Puppeting goes, that's not the problem we have. The problem is has your Jedi are about to, you know, take over the government. He's trying to loop Anakin in on this conspiracy, saying, Anakin, this is the reason why they don't want you a master. This is the reason they keep putting you down. This is why they wanted Obi-Wan to get the glory of ending the Clone Wars. And, you know, he's appealing to Anakin's ego. And it's working because he's very confused. Plus, the dark side muddles everything. And Yoda, Mace, and Obi-Wan say, and, and Obi-Wan even gives them the warning, say, hey, look, the dark side is all over you right now. For some reason, it's, it, we can see it surrounded all over you and Palpatine. So, again, they think there's an outside Sith controlling that. They don't realize that Palpatine is the Sith. Um, oh, they have, uh, man, Obi-Wan and Anakin have an extended conversation on what happens on spying on Palpatine, what that means, what he's asking him to do and everything. Uh, a lot of things... Uh, that had happened in previous novels. You know, of course, he's bringing back... In fact, why? From uh, the Yoda Dark Rendezvous is one of the Padawans in the Jedi Temple that Anakin kills. I, did, I didn't catch that the first time I read it through. Um, there's a way more extended scene in the opera. Palpatine just doesn't go into talking about the Sith. He's buttering up Anakin the whole time. There's several pages of dialogue, and it's engaging the whole time. It's so good. Um, a conversation with Obi-Wan and uh, Padme at the end when he says he killed younglings. He said, by the way, I've known. I've always known about you and Anakin. He said, I've just, out of respect for Anakin, my friend, I haven't told him. You know, I because Obi-Wan understands love is forbidden, but he, he loves uh, Anakin. He wants Anakin to be happy. Anakin is happy with Padme, and so even though it's against the rules, Obi-Wan's happy for them. It makes a lot of sense. In fact, Obi-Wan's Later on, Yoda uh, tells Mace Windu that Obi-Wan may be seeing things more clearly than anyone. Like, he sees the change. When Yoda is taking down or trying to fight Darth Sidious, he realizes the Sith have evolved. Yet the Jedi have may remained stagnant for a thousand years, and Yoda blames himself. He just kept to tradi tradition and didn't try to evolve the Jedi. And Matthew Stover is basically setting up... Uh, Luke's regime, you know, how Luke raises the Jedi is very different than how the tradition is, but that's okay. He's been resistant to that. In fact, he tells Qui-Gon, because there's a there's a there's just like a page, where he's talking to Qui-Gon. He went, now I will become your master. You will become my master, uh, Qui-Gon. And Qui-Gon is a shimmering blue ghost in it, because he's going to teach him a new way uh, that the Jedi should go. And basically, Qui-Gon was right. Uh, some of these other Jedi were right when Yoda wanted to stick to tradition. Uh, but Yoda is now, like I said, after he faces Palpatine, he realizes the Jedi must change. It's, it's really awesome stuff here. Um, it tells the story about how Bail Organa went out and uh, found Yoda and Obi-Wan, picked them both up in space, and how they came to be on board his ship. Um, Yoda on uh, Kashyyyk is really not even, I mean, he's mentioned to be in on there, but his adventure really isn't mentioned that much. Um, just that they picked him up in an escape pod later on. Uh, oh, one beautiful scene is Mace, when, he, when Anakin tells him that uh, Palpatine is Sidious, it, 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 it goes to like a little mini uh, uh, description of this is what it's like to be Mace. He does this a lot. This is, Matthew Stover goes, this is what it's like to be Anakin, to be Obi-Wan, to be fill in the blank. But this is what it's like to be Mace. He went, you love the Republic. You know, blah, blah, blah. Then you found out that the person running the Republic is a Sith. And everything you love has been a lie. And it's just like, you know, everything comes. So when Mace Windu goes, a Sith Lord, you know, when he delivers that l line in the movie, it's like, eh, but this is what's going on in his head, is what Matthew Sturber's saying. And it doesn't even, it skips all the cheesy dialogue and just goes with how Mace is just kind of uh, seeing everything. And then suddenly, uh, spider webs, almost cracks and spider webs form around Anakin. Anakin is now the shatter point of this whole situation. Mace doesn't know what that means. That's why he tells him to wait in the Jedi Temple. To wait in the Chepa Jibble. By the way, Shakti doesn't die. I thought she died in this novel, and she doesn't. So, and I, I reread that to make sure. Uh, she stops Anakin from try, she tries to stop Anakin from leaving the temple, but he leaves anyway. Other than that, all the deleted scenes of her death are not mentioned in the book. So she is still alive. 
So Shox T's death, you know, never happened until uh, I believe it was Force Unleashed. But anyway, uh, there's um, a lot of good stuff here, a lot of great stuff here, and it feels like its own novel and not a novel to a movie. The novelization is 100 times better. Excellent book. I understand why it's everyone's favorite book. It's good. It's still a movie novelization, but it doesn't feel like one. So excellent novel, excellent job by Matthew Stover. Um, so much EU is entwined into this. I mean, they talk about uh, Jabim and all this adventurous and all these other adventures that they had in the books and the comic books too. So just a marvelous job, a masterpiece. It could be. It could be Stover's best. Anyway, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.